Hello everybody, welcome along to our Betfred preview of the FA Cup final, the 190th edition of the Manchester Derby, but the first ever in the showpiece at Wembley. Delighted to say that I'm joined by two men who between them have played in four FA Cup finals and amassed over 500 appearances for the blue and red side of Manchester. It is Lou Macari and Michael Brown. Welcome along boys. Thank Lou, you. it's a big day isn't it, the FA Cup? You've played in three of them, it's going back a long time. History on the line this time. Yeah, it used to be, Sean, the biggest day in the football calendar. Beamed all over the world. Everybody wanted a piece of the action. Journalists were with you for probably the Monday before the cup final. They were down at your hotel. And there was no bigger cup competition in the world. Unfortunately, I just feel it's been devalued a little bit. Because when you play a semi-final there, that takes away the, the magic of the final. But once you get to the final, and I was there three times in four years, you realise, apart from being having to be a good side, you've got to have a little bit of luck on the day. Things have got to go for you. And if those things do go for you, then you can win the cup, which gives me the belief and hope that Manchester United <laughs> can do there it. There was a pause in there, but yeah. Yeah, but it gives me the belief that Manchester United can do it simply because it's not just about how good you are, because the best of teams in City have been the best team this season things can happen on the day and it doesn't work for you and you come away scratching your head thinking well why did it not work for us and that's Wembley so I'm pinning my hopes on another Wembley upset <laughs> and Manchester United winning. Okay and uh, Michael you were a finalist with Portsmouth back in 2010 that was obviously a big day for Pompey as well I think despite the fact that perhaps it might have been devalued over the last few years a little bit this is a Manchester derby. There's so much at stake, isn't there, with the treble, the domestic double for United. So this one in particular feels really special. It is special. I was actually shocked to find out that, uh, you know, when it was looking like was, the two clubs could meet, that they hadn't met in the FA Cup final before. And that's what was actually a bit strange. I mean, City going really, really well. Um, it's probably a, a, a one game you wouldn't really want, would you, against Manchester United to go win the FA Cup, the build-up for the treble going into the, the Champions League. But it makes it fascinating. Again, what sort of season would you say Manchester United would have if they go on and, and obviously get another trophy? It would be a fantastic return for them. So, listen, good rivalry, great games, some fantastic players. And I'm really looking forward to it. I'm on my way down tonight and uh, you know, I think it's going to be a great one. OK, no surprise, obviously, Manchester City are the clear favourites going into the game. They finished 14 points clear of United in the Premier League. They've won 18 of their last 22 matches in all competitions. And if you look at the four that they didn't, it's probably games that they didn't really need to win. A couple of Champions League ties and, of course, the last two games in the Premier League, Michael. So City have to be confident. You've also got the fact that Pep has won every single domestic final with Manchester City as well. So... Confidence is sky high at the moment, isn't it's it? It's there, isn't it? Do you know when you talk about what Pep Guardiola and this side have done? I mean, the stats are there. You hear a different one, like obviously domestic finals, how he produces in big games. It's been a little bit strange with those two games leading into this. Brighton and Brentford, yes, obviously late on, they obviously conceded. How does that affect them? Can Pep Guardiola give them a couple of days off? He said, mentally, I want you to get away from the football club. I want you to rest, not think about football. Then we come back and we've got and an enormous sort of 10, 11 days of, of football, of prep. Um, they're carrying a few injuries, um, we know that, so it's going to depend on who can get out there, risk to reward for obviously the final after that as well. So I think that's what's going to be key, what type of team can Manchester City put, put out. I think we've, we can pretty much get, get close to Manchester United's and I just think it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful game. I think Manchester United, heavily underdogs, lots of supporters are saying, I'm not going because I don't want to see City <laughs> dominate. I want to see that. But I really believe they've got a chance. OK, you're trying to pick holes a little bit with City there, which is understandable because there aren't that many, are there? But you mentioned the draw at Brighton, the loss at Brentford, those last two games coming into it. It's not ideal prep, is it? It's not. I was at both games. I think we've got to look at the quick turnaround of the Brighton game. It was a Brighton team, obviously, just qualifying for Europe getting into a, a really good stride and putting you under pressure, it was a bit, huge game for them and the amount of changes that the club had. Do you know, I think you look as well going into the Brentford game, tons of changes, so had opportunities, it could have been different. Um, I think he would have liked to have gone with this momentum thing that Pep Guardioli says. Um, he would have wanted to keep that winning trend, but I don't really feel like the way those games have gone has created any more pressure. I think that was the danger going into them. Um, was it going to create a little bit of negativity going, in, um, going into the, obviously the FA Cup final? I just feel it was about getting the players through the games, 
getting them all back wherever possible. There's, there's lots just carrying three, four, five day type injuries. Um, but hopefully now with a week's training, um, they'll, they'll be ready for it. And just one more on City for now. You mentioned the word pressure. Obviously, there is a lot of pressure. It's a massive week or two for Manchester City. Just how much do you think the players will be feeling that? The, the pressure of the treble the, and, of course, what's still to come in the European Cup? The, the pressure is there for sure. I mean, we're not going to hide away from that. But actually, I think that's more on Pep Guardiola, the staff, the football club, the fans, than actually these players. I don't think they actually feel the pressure that much, which is it's amazing when you get to speak to them and you get to listen. It's just another game for them. They're going into Real Madrid at home and it wasn't like it was, oh, it was like, yeah, it's a big one, let's go. And they're not realising what they're in. So I think that's what they've become now. This is quite normal for them, this type of game, whether it be internationally or whether at club, club level. Um, so the composure's there. The one thing I would say is a lot of these players will really want that Champions League. Will that affect the FA Cup? Will they have one eye on? That's the one thing that needs managing as good as possible. OK, Lou, let's move on to your former club, Manchester United. I mean, the key thing really to note is it feels like Ten Hag's been there a long time. It's only been one season yeah. and he has turned things around. Third in the Premier League, yeah. two cup finals, already won one. I mean, they're coming into the game on the back of four wins as well. So there is a feel-good factor at United. Now. Yeah, I think that's all that people were looking for, showing improvement. Because they, they were so poor last year that somebody coming in, as Ten Hag did, just looking for that improvement. The improvement's been okay. You mentioned the trophies that they've um, they've been involved in and they've won. But this is this is the big one now. Manchester United supporters and City supporters. There is a rivalry there. Probably not as bad as it was back in my day, uh, but there's still a rivalry. They're even going separate ways to Wembley, aren't they? <laughs> they've been advised to take separate routes on the M6 and whatever. So there's still that rivalry there and. Oh, United supporters don't want to go there and lose, A, because it's City, and B, because it's a cup final. And I'm hoping the players that are now completely different to my day, where I, didn't, I don't think there was a foreign player played in that cup final uh, in 77. Now we've got lots of foreign players. Do they fully understand the rivalry in Manchester? I'm not so sure, and I agree with Michael said. They'll probably, City lads will be probably thinking about the Wednesday. Champions League. But if you go to Wembley and you're not ready for it, you can come on stock and you can be at the end of the game thinking, where did it all go wrong? And do you, th I, you, do you think this mentality with Manchester United, you know, where there's still a question mark over um, getting the ball back at times of a few weak, sort of weak in the mind when things aren't going so well, do you think they, they will have that mentality to, to get into this game and really put the pressure on City? Or do you feel like they'll just sort of drift into it? Do you think they'll be able to force that? I'm hoping they force the pressure on City, Michael. But, you know, cup finals, a lot can happen. I went there in 76 against Southampton. The pressure on us was enormous. I woke up on cup final morning, switched the television on, all the pundits were on. There wasn't one pundit in BBC or ITV that even gave us a chance. Because, sorry, gave us a chance of losing because we were playing Southampton. But is this the same now? Is this what this, we're looking at now? And we're is saying we're City. Same. Everybody's feeling like it's going to be City mm. all day long. So we went to Wembley and, you know, we lost in the, I think it was 86 minute. Um, if VAR was in place then, it'd probably been disallowed. <laughs> I'm the only person that ever wanted VAR in the future. Because <laughs> if, if VAR had been in place, it'd probably been disallowed. Um, he looked offside, but you don't get a chance with four minutes to go to get back into the game. So decisions and things that happen in the game, which, you know, all the pundits talk about it after the match, they will play a big part in Saturday's game, Sean. And no matter who wins and loses, people will be sitting there saying, that was a deciding factor, that was a deciding factor. So I'm hoping that uh, they can ra rise to the occasion, United lads, and play. And this season, I've seen them play exceptionally well, I've seen them play OK, and I've seen them play poor, so I'm just hoping... This is one of the better days. I mean, Michael's right, they are underdogs, but it's not quite the same as it? it's first versus third in the Premier League, and United will take heart from the fact that they beat City in the last meeting at Old Trafford. Yeah, but when you watch, you know, you watch both teams play, take away City's last couple of performances, they were in song every week, and you thought, well, how are you going to stop him? How are you going to stop the centre forward? And when you do stop the centre forward, somebody else in the team comes to the forefront and gets a couple of goals. And just man for man, they have looked looked a little bit better than United all season. 
never a doubt, Sean, because United were never, never really in contention for winning the league. But City were always there, came from way, way behind. And it takes an exceptional team to come from way behind. They've got to get the ball back better. Yeah. That's what they've got. That's the truth of it. The big players need to be able to do the other side of the game at Manchester United to affect this City team. I want to mention something you touched on as well, the, perhaps the mental fragility that we've seen so far this season, and particularly away from home against the big sides. I had a look earlier. Now, United in the Premier League against the other clubs in the top nine, seven defeats and one draw this season. You look at some of the results. 7-0 away to Liverpool, 6-3 away to City, 3-2 at Arsenal, 2-0 Newcastle. Come on, Sean, get some better three, results one, than Aston that. Villa. <laughs> but, I mean, you cannot deny that, Lou. The fact that no. when they've gone away from home in a big game, they have struggled and they've conceded a lot of goals. That's been the problem this season with them. As soon as you've got an away fixture, you, you, you're watching it and you're thinking, right, what's going to happen today? And they don't, they don't seem as powerful and as, as good a team as they are at Old Trafford. You know, the record at Old Trafford this year is, is good. And the people that have come to the games at Old Trafford have, have come to expect them to turn it on and win the matches. But, but this game's not at Old Trafford, so no, you expect not. a similar outcome. Yeah. Or what is it in their performance? That's why I asked you that question, you know, mentally, this Manchester United side at times still haven't got to the level that they need for Manchester United to recover. I've only seen one team at Old Trafford this season actually battering them, but not winning. And that, funny enough, was in the FA Cup. It was Fulham. Fulham did everything wrong that day. They were well on top, they were in front, got a couple of men, got somebody sent off, manager was then sent off. Chaotic it was, and they were brilliant on the day. So really, Fulham should have been possibly at Wembley. But United got there, uh, and that was the worst they played all season at Old Trafford. Mm, I think it is a concern, isn't it, Michael, going into the game, the fact that they are so comfortable at home but have struggled on the road. I, I guess United will take heart from the fact they've been here before and won a League Cup already. That, that's the point for me, and, and I think they're going to have to get the ball and keep the ball at times. Make City run around wherever possible, because if, if City get comfortable, then I fear a little bit for Manchester United in regards to... Um, for long periods of time, not having the ball, being, being dominated rather than them having it and being controlled in situations, that's what they don't like. And I'm sure that's what Pep Guardiola will, will try and control. They need to create more, though, against um, Manchester United than, than possibly just having a lot of possession. Mm. Um, but it's, it, it's, again, how they manage that midfield area, that rotation, with whether it be John Stone stepping in, making a two, and the forward runners in wider areas, um, that's what they're going to have to do. And whether they sacrifice the nine, we'll soon see. Yeah, we know that Manchester City will dominate the ball. They have most of the possession. We saw that at Old Trafford. They had 70-odd percent possession, but United still on the counter-attack posed that threat. And that will be what Manchester United look to, won't they? The pace of Rashford, perhaps Anthony if he plays Sancho. That's got to be the main hope. You wouldn't expect Ten Hag to go all out from the beginning, would you? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't Sean. But with the, they've got players that can be a match winner on the day. Bruno, um, you know, he, from midfield, popping up in the box. They might be without a, a natural centre-forward on, sa on Saturday. Uh, but Bruno can come from all areas of the pitch, pop up in there, get you the important opening goal. And if you get the opening goal, that can put pressure on even a team as good as Manchester City. You're chasing the game a little bit and things can then start going wrong for them. So, because it's Wembley, you know, certainly if it was if it was anywhere else, I'd be I wouldn't be as as hopeful as I am. The fact that it's Wembley, and we've seen this week in the playoffs, there's been little incidents and things happening, and it's going to penalty kicks. And Sheffield Wednesday couldn't get a goal against Barnsley for 45 minutes, and it it was in the last 10 seconds of the game. So that is Wembley. It's a it's a place to go, and everyone's got a chance. So I've got to believe, Sean, that United have got a chance if things go right. And they go to penalty kicks um, or whatever, you're still there. Mm. I mean, Michael, we often talk about this, don't we? The fact that it is a one-off game, the fact that it's a final, the fact that it's a derby. I mean, are these overplay cliches or do they have some foundation in them, do you think? I, I mean, it's, it's strange, isn't it, that we're actually talking about a, a team having a chance. That tells <laughs> you the, the difference in where we are. This is Manchester United and we're actually saying, is it a fairy tale to beat City? in the final, I mean, that's, and you'll say, yeah, that's my, the blue hat that I've got on on this side, but that's actually where a lot of people believe this fixture's at. Um, but they've got more than a chance when you have the type of players that we're talking about. Casemiro, for one, is on fire. I really like, enjoy what he can do. 
if an Ericsson plays, they can produce big moments. And Varane at the, you know, at the base, having that sort of defensive mindset, that mentality not to get beat. Um, so there's got much more than that. And I think that's where I don't think City will underestimate them. And again, you've said you need a bit of luck on a cup final day. You can have all that planning, all that preparation. Um, I do feel City is affected at the moment in regards to what they've got coming. If it was just the last game now, I think you'd say, right, everybody go for it. And if you get that particular injury, well, you've got weeks to put it right. But um, it makes it fascinating. But it is obviously the underdog that you have to watch. But it's ironic that we're talking about Manchester United being in that position. OK, Lou, let's go back to the United threats then and how they might harm City. We've already talked about Bruno. Uh, both he and Rashford scored in that 2-1 victory when they last met at Old Trafford. They're the only two players in the squad who've got more double-digit goals in the squad. So the only two players with 10 or more throughout the season. We've mentioned Bruno. Rashford's got 30 goals this season. It's been a brilliant improvement from him under Ten Hag. Just talk about how those two have worked that out this season. I've never seen such a change in a player, Sean, as I've seen in Marcus Rashford. Um, I wouldn't say he was struggling, but he wasn't, you know, he wasn't setting the world on fire. Goals weren't his, his main thing. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, comes a new Marcus Rashford. Goals from all angles. He was that confident. He was hitting things from almost a dead ball line right across the face of the goals. And instead of going across the face of the goals, they were ending up in the back of the net. Everything he touched turned to goals. And that's the player that's now going to Wembley on Saturday with Manchester United. And probably their biggest hope of, of getting that all-important opening goal. He's been brilliant. I think, I think we have to understand as well that, that the team that's been built and the turnaround from the whole football club for that improvement is helped Marcus Rashford. Yes, he's contributed in a huge way. He's confident, he's scoring goals, always had that potential. But his teammates putting him in them situations. You need a winning team around you and then the, the, you know, certain players can step up. And he'll be getting more mature now, isn't he? As he gets a little bit older, he gets to understand the game more in the right positions, but a wonderful return from him. Yeah, he announced himself as an 18-year-old in the derby, winning uh, with the only goal of the game at the Etihad a few years ago. So. He's got special memories of this. Yeah, I watched him in the reserve, Sean, before he made his breakthrough. And when you, I was watching, you, you couldn't actually see the player we're seeing now. You couldn't actually see a natural goal scorer because we don't see that many natural goal scorers nowadays. Well, I don't, compared to the players from the past that I look at. But I look at the City lad, natural goal scorer. He goes through, he knows what he's going to do. Couldn't see Marcus like that at 18. But as his game's progressed and he's got older and he's got a bit more mature... There is a finisher there now. OK, Michael, let's move on to the Manchester City threats, and there are plenty of them, so it might take a while, but let's talk about Erling Haaland. 52 goals in 50 appearances in all competitions, a hat-trick against United at the Etihad as well. Only one goal in his last six, actually, which is awful for him. He's been resting. <laughs> He's been waiting for the big one. But, yeah, I mean, it's been an incredible season beyond anyone's expectations. Do you know, from the first day, um, there was a, a, an unveiling outside of the Etihad and we were all there, former players, and we were on the stage about talking about this particular person coming into the building, how he's going to affect it, and the supporters were all there. And he just walked in with this aura of confidence from a young man. And his dad was stood there and he just said, he just seems so cool, so collective. He's ready to go into training, he's got no fear of it. And he just took it in his stride. And you hear the players straight away talking about his dedication, his commitment. Uh, professionalism, what he gives and what he does, then he's got that all-round physicality, that pace, that understanding. At times, he doesn't touch the ball for long periods. And mentally, you, you know, you would say, you, you say, well, go and get the ball, go and get a touch, go and get involved. He just says, no, thank you, I don't need to bother with that. I'm going to wait. And then ultimately, he comes alive. It's a different mentality, but a, a unbelievable return of goals. And, um, you know, we, we start looking every time, we start saying, oh, he's only got one in six. And then he, then he comes straight back into the action with a few goals. Um, but again, he's, took, he's been taken off, he's been managed for a long, long period and he's still got that return. Lou, as a former striker yourself, what in particular has impressed you? When he's got decisions to make inside that box, every time I've seen him, he makes the right decision, whether to pass it, whether to shoot. Most of the time it ends up in the back of the net when he does shoot, but he's got the knack. He goes into the near post when... You see players nowadays are standing there as the ball's coming in and they're dreaming. But he gets in the near post, little flick, he realises a little flick with his head or with his chest, the ball's going to end up in the back of the net. I've not seen, I call him an old-fashioned centre-forward, I've not seen another old-fashioned centre-forward 
in a long, long time. But he's come along, and every time he's in that box, I'm thinking he's going to score. I'm not, I'm not thinking he could score or maybe score. I'm thinking he will score. United will do well to stop him, but if you focus too much on Haaland, he could be in trouble. And I think that's where City have, have, have learned to, to actually to do something different. Pep Guardiola's always got a different move, a different strategy. What, really, what I really like is the wider players. Obviously, they're coming inside a lot. Uh, Grealish has got more confident, whether it be Bernardo, when he wants more of a runner down that right-hand side. But the midfield too. Mackay Gundogan, Kevin De Bruyne, it's their runs into key areas. So as soon as he takes the two centre-backs away, you have to go really tight with them. It's that area in between the full-backs that are the problem. Wide players can stay out there. And then the two full-backs find it difficult with those runs because the extra midfielder comes in. That gives it a little bit of a problem for Manchester United or whoever it may be in the middle. And then these two are really clever. Ilkay Gundogan in particular, with great time of runs. And then it's the supply line, isn't it, where the space is created down this sort of right-hand side channel for Kevin De Bruyne. Uh, and that's really what, what impresses everybody. And, 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 and they've got different options. I think that's the point, isn't it, for City? Whether Phil Ford and now coming back, he's getting a few games. If Jack Grealish doesn't make it, that might look a little bit too soon for him for the, for the FA Cup final. Um, but then does he play Riyad Mahrez as well? You know, there's yeah. lots of options, but they've really got a good understanding. How do we see the game going then? Because we've had 12 goals so far in the two meetings in the Premier League this season. 6-3 at the Etihad, 2-1 at Old Trafford. Only one of the last 15 meetings, actually, as well, has finished a draw. So... Lou, do you think it'll be cagey? Do you think it'll be plenty of goals? How do you see the game going? I don't think there's players on that pitch that can play cagey. I think they've they've got wonderful talent. They know what they're doing. They'll be out to make a name for themselves. They'll be out to score that winning goal. Uh, and the United lads, I'm hoping, are out to stop City winning the treble. Simple as that. I because think that's the point, isn't people, it? People talk about it, but not as much as they talked about it back in 77 when we went there against Liverpool. We were well aware that what Liverpool are trying to achieve. Like City, they had a game on the Wednesday night in, in Europe, which we thought they would win. So we went to Wembley, not not being sort of brainwashed about stopping Liverpool, because the main thing was to beat Liverpool. That's all your supporters are interested in. And I think on the day, uh, we, we lost the fact that this was Liverpool in the you know, trying to win a second trophy and eventually trying to win a third trophy. I'm not so sure on Saturday whether the United lads will be thinking about stopping City for the same reason, they'll just be wanting to stop City because they realise they've been the best team in the country this year. Yeah, obviously Manchester United, Michael, there's a lot of pride in playing a certain way, uh, but there is only one sort of way you can play against City, isn't there? Well, you know, listen, you could go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, look at Brighton. They opened it up you know, last week and said, right, we're going to go for it. We'll go, we'll go really tight, we'll, we'll go three for three on your front three, we'll go and lock on in midfield, we'll go tight on the press. And again, we'll, we'll go for it. Manchester United could do that because they've got the players to actually create and get the other side. Whether they're brave enough to do it, we'll soon see because out of possession, as we know, they're not as good at, as, as needed. But regards to City, I'd love Pep Guardiola to open it up, go for it really quickly and try and outrun Manchester United in those areas, like a Bernardo, whether it be a Foden or, or, or Riyad Mahrez, as we've said. But that midfield three really, really get wider, really get some deliveries in a little bit quicker, the supply line into Haaland. And then we could see a really, really exciting game because Manchester United then have a bit more space on the counter. Um, but, you know, I, I just think, I, I hope it's not a cagey game. I hope it's not one of those where they come out and just try and control the position, not really progress anywhere. Because I think that'll suit Manchester United a little bit more, where they say, OK, we'll just sit in our slots yeah. and that'll, that'll help us. Yeah. But I think if City go quicker, and score early, that could be the difference. Yeah, play, try and play a trap for, for City to fall into. We shall see. Right, Lou, it's decision time. We talked about it at length. How do you see the game going? What's your prediction? Going for a draw. <laughs> Extra time. And maybe even penalty kicks. Okay. Is this a prediction or hope? Well, this is what it is. This is what it is. This is what it is. When I look at the City team, I'm thinking, well, there's problems there and there's problems there. And if you worry too much about your opponents, you'll probably not put in a performance yourself. So I'm hoping that the United lads go out there, do what they can do when they're on form, do what they can do when they're playing at home at Old Trafford, not, not their way form. And uh, 
make a real game of it. And okay. I, th I think it's possible that that can happen. Okay, I'm not, not going to let you get away with just saying it's going to be a draw and penalties. Well, what else do you want me to say? Who's going to lift the trophy, Lou? <laughs> Whoever <laughs> takes the best penalty. <laughs> um, God. They're, they're big favourite City, but you know Wembley's proved in the past that you can be you can be a big favourite in any game and it might not happen for you. And I'm, obviously I'm hoping that uh, it doesn't happen for them and our, our lads rise to the occasion and, and play the best they can do. And it is possible, Sean, when you get to that final and Michael's touched on, will the City lads be a bit too confident? Can that happen? Well, of course it can happen because we went there against Southampton and and believe, probably believed everything that the pundits were saying about it was just a case of United turning up and, and beating a team from Southampton. But it's, it's not that easy. OK, Michael, and just how confident are you? Listen, I'm, I'm confident that Manchester City can comfortably win the game, whether it be a 3-1 tight performance. I think that's what you'd, you'd probably say, wouldn't you? Would you bet against Haaland scoring? No, it's very difficult to do that. But I do still have that you know, cautious approach of Manchester United with the players that they've got. Listen, if we play this 9 out of 10, City are going to win the game. But it's the FA Cup final. As you've said, that could happen. But the, I mean, that's where Manchester United are at. Can we hold them? Can we win on penalties? Can we do something like that? If City play well enough, I think City win the game. OK. City for Michael, as we thought. Maybe United for Lou. We're not quite sure. We'll try and get it out of him. Come <laughs> kick off. Thanks for joining us. It's hopefully going to be a cracking game on Saturday. The Manchester Derby for the first time ever in the FA Cup final. Will it be a domestic double for Ten Hag or will it be the second leg in a historic treble for Pep Guardiola? Can't wait to find out.